Good to see you. I am glad that you are here today. If you're joining us online, welcome. We are in a series called You Ask For It. And this kind of is a, uh, a going back to Easter. If you were here, we have uh, more people on Easter. It probably doesn't surprise you. And so we decided to do a survey. What did you want to hear us talk about? Making sure that we're just... Uh, uh, giving you an opportunity to kind of have a voice. And one of the things that came up was, hey, I'm under a lot of pressure. I'm under a lot of stress. I could do with some advice on how to do that. What's the Bible talk about? So we decided to uh, do that the week one. And then we're, I'm going to take another shot at it, but we're going to kind of address it from a different direction uh, today about stress. Because I think stress, I agree with you. Uh, stress is one of those things that can swallow us up and uh, cause us to not thrive and do well. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I, I certainly have my fair share of stress. And, and, and so you have stressful situations that we find ourselves in, but also we have personality types that deal with it a certain way. And so back in the 50s, there were some guys that uh, doctors, they were actually cardiologists that, that separated it into two types. Type A, which you've probably heard of, right? You're a type A personality. Th those guys were not psychologists who came with that, uh, up with that. They were cardiologists because they found that there was, it was hard. Uh, people that had, were type A personalities, the way they handled stress actually caused problems with their heart. So there's physiological damage that can happen if you can combine those. But all of us have stressful situations in our lives, and so it certainly applies to us, to everybody here. But in particular, if you're a type of A type personality, you're saying, "Well, what is that? I mean, how do I know if I'm if I'm if I'm, if I'm that person, the type A?" Well, uh, I'm sure there's tests. We're going to look at a little bit of that today. Uh, but just, just to kind of give everybody a sense of the two kinds of people, you see that real clear like at, when you're at the supermarket. Supermarket, when you just, as you come in, the supermarket managers, and all, they've, already, they've already figured that out. See, they have the carts, the regular shopping carts for type B. Type A, they have a red basket because they know you're in a hurry. You don't have time to do, you're not going to be hanging, you're grabbing a basket, maybe not even a basket, you're just going to start piling it in your hands, and you're running around, you're in hyper mode, you're focused, you don't want to be there, you're, you're just kind of grabbing the stuff that you need, and then when you get to the, to the checkout, they've figured that out as well, right? I mean, you know, they, they have all the self-checkout lines, and you can see the type A, they're tapping their foot, they're looking around, they're evaluating. They don't have, they're going to get the short, who's fastest, who's kind of having trouble with their credit card. And, and then when you get home, you know, and now I, I just, I'm a self, I, I struggle with type A issues. When I get home, I try to get it all in on one, 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 <laughs> one trip. It's more than one trip. And usually something breaks or drops or I might, fingers like dislocated in the process or something. but I'm trying my best because I I'm in a hurry and and type a people if you're in a conversation with them they're always trying to finish your sentences you know or interrupting you one of the two and they're like just vibrating just try as you're just talking you just see they're getting more I mean they just they're waiting for their moment you know they just can't they it's so hard so type it that's kind of a We'll look at it a little more, but if you if you have those tendencies, that makes it even more challenging. So basically, we're talking about a hurried lifestyle. If you have a hurried lifestyle, that has negative effects on you. Four primary things. One is I feel more stress. It does. So we all have stressful situations, but it, you, it ends up increasing in your life. You certainly feel that way. Notice the Bible says, I had no time to care for myself. That's one of the classic ones of just being hurried, is we tend to neglect the things that are important. We tend to neglect the ourselves. 
and we're so busy trying to do things, we end up neglecting the thing. Because there's that that's super important is caring for yourself. You remember the the fable with the uh, the the gold the goose that laid the golden eggs, and then it was only one egg a day. And the owner got frustrated that it was only one egg a day, so he ends up killing the goose, thinking that he can get more eggs, and now he has no eggs. Listen, a sick goose won't produce any more eggs, and you are that golden goose. You need to care for yourself, and when you don't have time for that, when your schedule gets off whack, and then you, know, you don't have time to wash your car, and then when it rains, you're happy. Well, I got a free wash. That's not the same. You know, but dishes pile up, all kinds of stuff happen. Then I lose my joy. That's one of the things that goes out the, the window the fastest. We're in a hurry. We don't have time to enjoy life. Look at this verse. My days go by faster than a runner. They fly away without me seeing any joy. When you don't take time, you have to carve that out. You have to be intentional about it. Let me ask you a question. When is the last time you felt genuine joy? Think about it for a second. Last time you genuine joy. If you're caught up in a hurried lifestyle, it's probably been a while. It's probably been a while because we're, we got so much going on. We're juggling so many things. Everything's so serious. We're always in a crisis. We have urgent this, urgent that. You know, some, I've heard people say, well, I don't have time to take a break. I have so much coming at me. The devil's attacking me. The devil doesn't take a break. Since when is the devil our role model? You know, God took, took a break and, and, he, and, he, and he instituted that. Hey, you need to have a regular break in your lifestyle. Number three, it says, I'm also less productive. This one's kind of uh, counterintuitive because we tend to think if I'm in a hurry, I'm more productive, but there's a law of diminishing returns. Creative people understand this, that, you, that there's a percolation, there's a meditation, there's a part of us where we need time. It says careful planning puts you ahead in the long run. Hurry and scurry puts you further behind. Have you ever felt like that, where you're, you're hurrying and scurrying, but you're not taking time to recharge your, your, your batteries? You were not made to be like the Energizer Bunny who just keeps going and going and going. No, we need, we need to back away from that. A person in a hurry makes mistakes. We actually become less productive. And when we're in a hurry, we, worst of all, we can't hear God. We can't hear God when we're in a hurry. The Bible says, be still. And in that place, we sense God's presence. Now, some of you pray and, 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 and that's a discipline you've carved out in your life, and I think that's terrific. And prayer, though, really there's, there's two parts of prayer. There's us, you know, lifting our prayer to God, speaking it out, and then there's hearing from the Lord. They're really kind of different. I mean, they're, they're two sides of the same coin, but they are different. And... And if you're going to pray and you're going to talk to God, you can, be in, you can be kind of in a hurry for that. It's hard to hear from God when we're in that. We, we need to slow down. You know, over the, over the centuries, Christians have taught as a spiritual discipline of prayer. So if you're hearing from God and, you, and you're in a hurry and, all, and that's working for you, that's awesome. Praise God. But for those of you who don't feel like you're hearing from the Lord very well, and you're wondering, hey, how can I, what can I do to increase that? Let me suggest to you something that Christians have done for, like I said, for centuries, really millennium, on how to slow down. And, and it's when they walk, you know, because some people, they like to pray and they walk. And, you know, they do a prayer walk and they're just kind of booking around and maybe you're walking your dog and you're, nothing, again, that that's good. You're getting some cardio too, kind of multitasking, especially if you're a type A person. But what I'm going to suggest is that if you want to hear from the Lord more, consider this. Walk with your hands behind your back. 
This, is, this has been taught for centuries uh, among, uh, among Christians that want to grow in that because it slows you down. You can't walk fast when you see, like that. I'm booking around, man, I'm hustling, getting stuff done. When you walk with your hands behind your back, it forces you to slow down, cause, causes you to step back, slow down, hear from the Lord. Sometimes God is talking, wanting to speak to you, but all the circuits are busy. He can't get through. So he's wanting, who wants to say, I know what you're going through. I, I, I see what's happening, and I have a pathway forward. And, I, and he's wanting to speak to us, but we are not in a capacity where we can hear. You know, we have some amazing small groups, so many great small groups this semester. I certainly hope you're in one. And it's not too late to join and be part of one. One of our small groups is about this very thing we're talking about, about stress and, and learning to uh, deal with stress by, by pausing a little in our lives strategically so that we can hear the Lord. Our, our small group leader, Nicole Reynolds, uh, I asked her just to share real quick, just in case you haven't found a small group. I'm not trying to pull you away from the group that you're in, but here's what she says about her group if you'd like to be part of it. Hi, I've been your family. I'm Nicole Reynolds, and I'm leading a small group called Project Stress Relief. Feeling tired, exhausted, and overwhelmed are not the ways of the kingdom. The world has gotten faster, and the amount of information you take in each day only continues to grow. This nonstop pace of life is overloading your brain and overwhelming your nervous system. We are overinformed, overwhelmed, and if you're like so many of, of us, you're over it. Through our Bible study and through some practical tips on how to combat stress, you will learn to do what God has called us to do in terms of fighting those thoughts in your mind. So if you're tired of being distracted, disconnected, and you feel like peace is hard to come by, join us for Project Stress Relief Small Group here at church on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Love to see you there. I love it. I love it. Here's an email I got recently. It says, my dedication to my work caused me to engage in 70-hour work weeks that gradually starve me. In the midst of trying to meet three major deadlines, I reached the end of my strength and emotional and physical exhaustion. I was on the verge of physical and emotional collapse. I had reached burnout. My well was dry, and the only thing I felt was the crush of expectations, the fear of failure, and the slow erosion of joy, passion and hope, so I descended gradually into the pit. Maybe you feel like that, where your joy is eroding, the well is dry. Well, there's, there's a way forward. God has, this is not new. That's why I was quote. you see in the Bible, we're looking at Bible verses that were written many, many years ago, and, and we can learn from that. We can learn from that. One of the things that we need to be careful of is that when we're, when we're giving our lives, our very best of our lives to something, that it's going to give the kind of payoff that, that we want, we deserve, and we need. Jesus talked about that when he said this. He said, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Your business is successful. You make lots of money. You have accolades and achievements, but you lose your family, or you lose your soul. You lose those kinds of things in the process. Did you really win? That's what Jesus is talking about. He says, be careful what you're giving your life for, that you don't neglect soul care. You don't neglect the things that are important. Well, one of the things that helps with this is setting healthy, reasonable boundaries. Okay? everybody's heard about boundaries that's been real popular but I think sometimes we think we're better at it than we are so I did come up with a little quiz if you pull out your your handout I think it's online as well on your handout is a way for you it's just I'm gonna I just ask you 10 questions you give yourself a one if it's yes and you give yourself a zero or just leave it blank if if if, if it's not true okay so an affirmative answer. Here's the first one. First question is, I plan at least one 24-hour period per week to refresh my soul. So if that's true about you, then you put yes. Now this is kind of a test of ethics as well, right? 
So don't look at somebody else's thing because that might influence them in a negative way. Like, oh, Bill, I know what the right answer is. I just don't do it. Okay, so that's the first one. Number two is, so a, a zero if it's not true, a one if it is. Okay, I have at least one very close friend outside my work, one good friend who is not a Christian, and one friend who I can meet with for a hobby, sharing, or whatever. So if you have that built into your life, then you can give yourself a one. You go out, not a Christian, I didn't say best friend, but you got to have a friend because it's part of what it means to be uh, in the world and, and connected to people and out of the box and, and being on mission with the Lord. Number three, I take all of my vacation time and enjoy it and wish I had even more. Some of you are going, well, of course I do. Hey, listen, there's plenty of people that would say, they're on vacation, and day two, they're thinking about work. They can't wait to get back. Number four, I have at least one lifetime interest outside my work and can experience it at least once a week. Okay, playing a musical instrument, golfing, uh, diving, woodworking, softball, something you do annually on vacation that's not what we're talking about this is something that's built into your life number five my spouse and children have my complete attention when i am with them that one can be challenging right because sometimes you're physically present but emotionally or mentally you're somewhere else how do you know the best person to talk to is your spouse if your kids are a little older ask them they'll they'll be honest with you because we tend to think Again, we, I'm not sure we're always dialed in. Number six, I take a day off every week, and I don't think about work at all. That one's challenging. Just disconnect. Number seven, I have a prayer group or Bible study or support group that I meet with at least once a week. Now, we provide small groups, and certainly we think that being in a small group where you can grow spiritually is super beneficial, but you need a group that you're part of. Number eight, I am currently involved in a learning experience on a subject that has nothing to do with my work. So you're reading, or you're taking uh, maybe a, a college class, or you're researching something on the internet, you're studying something new in business, or in the science world, or you're growing in your you know, theology or something, but you're doing something to enrich yourself in that way. Number nine, I ignore text messages and let voicemail pick up the phone messages during meal times, during meditation times, and family times. Cell phone, let's be honest, can cause a lot of stress. That is a source being tethered to the stress ball. And number 10, I am not working more hours per week than I agreed to work in my contract. Now, the assumption there is, is that you are working when you're there, you show up on time, you work diligently, you don't hang out at the water cooler, or, you know, chit-chatting, you're not rolling through social media. I mean, because the Bible says that a laborer is worthy of their hire. So it's our job to work fully engaged when we are at work, but when then we're off, we're off, and we're done, and we're able to disconnect there, okay? So how do you think that you did? Well, here's the score. First is ask it's, it's, if you give yourself 8 to 10, you ask yourself, am I being honest? As I said, it's an ethics question. So if, it, but if you're in there, that's great if you're, if you're honest. and uh, six, to, 6 to 7 is, is, means you have weak boundaries, areas to grow. 4 to 5, porous boundaries. And then 1 to 3 is those are some significant boundary challenges. And, and, and having that clarity, that helps... That helps you to organize your life so that you can handle stress. You see, there's a, there's a physiology behind stress. The human brain, we were built a particular way. God designed us a particular way. But often, because we're in this fast-paced society, we push our body and we treat it uh, like we're in, you know, like there's a predator after us. Or we're, you know, we're in wartime. And it's really just our job. It's really just the things we're going through. And so we live at this heightened state where our adrenaline is pumping full board and we're on this, and that's causing a fair amount of the stress in our lives, how we're reacting to it. 
Studies show that somebody who lives under a lot of stress like that, particularly type A people, when, when they often die of heart attacks and when they've done uh, autopsies, their adrenal gland is much larger. It's enlarged because of the kind of, they, they just treated life like they were under this uh, constant stress that our bodies were not designed uh, to operate that way. And one of the byproducts of having high adrenaline is also cortisol. Cortisol overproduction has a lot of negative uh, impact on our, on our bodies and on our minds. Uh, type A pre people produce four times more adrenaline than type B, and type A people produce 43 times more cortisol. 43 times more. And here's some of the negative effects of cortisol on your body. First of it is anxiety. Because of the cortisol, the, the, uh, the adrenaline, it blocks the natural tranquilizers that your body is meant to give to your body. It sh kind of shuts that down and blocks that so you're unable to receive that. Also depression. It blocks the, uh, some of the hormones that cause us to be content, to experience happiness, uh, enjoy, enjoy. And instead, we end up with depression. And then memory loss. There's a, 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 the hippocampus in your brain, it means seahorse because it's got this weird convoluted uh, way it looks, but it actually is something in your, bot, in your brain that produces uh, part of the memory, this memory cells that we have to increase our memory, and that under long-term periods of cortisol shrinks the hippocampus. You have fewer brain cells for your memory. And then weight gain, a few years back, uh, I hired a, uh, a, a local trainer. She was actually a trainer for the Navy SEALs at Little Creek. She was their personal trainer, so I just hired her kind of, uh, you know, to come by my house and work with my family. And she was talking about cortisol and the effects of Navy SEALs. Now, they're basically professional athletes. And yet, they, many of them struggle with weight gain in their stomach, even though they work out all day long, constantly. She said it's because of the cortisol. There's, there's under so much stress, even though they're professional athletes, they're under so much stress, it, it creates this weight gain. And it's not just calories in, calorie out. It, it's, there's more to it than that. And so increased amounts of cortisol creates that problem as well, weight gain. And then number five is disrupted sleep cycle. And you know this, if you have if you function with a lot of adrenaline in your life, a lot of cortisol in your life, then you, it's, you try to go to bed, you might fall asleep, but all of a sudden, boom, you wake up. You're, it's not just the, the emotional stuff. There's a physiological part that's going on. You, your body has not been able to calm down. You've got so much overload of these hormones that it's causing problems in your sleep, so you're not really able to sleep. And you can try all the tranquilizers and sleeping pills, but that really messes your sleep cycle. And it, even though you're, you're zonked out, you're not really getting the kind of sleep that God designed you to have. So really what it comes down to is you just, well, you and I, we need to manage the negative stress that we have in our lives. So the first thing is, is just be more aware of your personality uh, propensity. I like to say that because sometimes if we think it's our personality, it's like locked in. No, we, we, we get choices here. So you're aware of your stress level and how well, and, and if you're in a hurry mode all the time. One of the ways to do that is, is allow God to, to speak into your life. A lot of times we don't want anybody to speak into our life. We get super defensive. Probably most of us have nobody who can really speak into our life. It doesn't matter who it is. We get defensive, we, 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 we dismiss it, all kinds of... That's why when we go to God, He can really speak into our lives if we allow Him. Here's a great prayer. Search me, O God, I know and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Okay, here's the key phrase now. Point out anything. I mean, we're not letting anybody else point things out. Why not let God say something? He certainly knows us and how He wired us and has our best interests. Point out anything you find in me that makes you sad. Is there anything that needs to change? Is there anything that I'm neglecting that I shouldn't be neglecting? Am I just letting the fast-paced world around me create all this uh, anxiety and adrenaline and cortisol, all the things we've been talking about? Because that 
That's a great place to start, letting God speak into your life. Number two is uh, making sure that you do get enough sleep. Sleep actually is a great way, not just drugged out, but good, healthy sleep brings our, our, all those the, the stress level down. Therefore, we do not lose heart outwardly for we're wasting away. So there's enough problems going on. You know, we're wasting away inwardly. But inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. That's the key principle. There's a daily routine, a day-by-day -day routine. Not waiting until you're on your annual vacation. Some people, they just work crazy, crazy. And then they know there's a vacation coming, so they step it up. And then by the time they show up at their vacation, they're just like wiped out and exhausted. And so most of the vacation is just in recovery mode. Well, that, that's because we're not living with the daily, the day-by-day -day principle. Each day renewing. And one of the best ways, of course, we renew weekly on a Sabbath, but we renew daily through sleep. And other things. But sleep is one of those things that most of us do every day. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is, a, is, a, is eternal. So there are some things that we can do to help. Obviously, the most important thing that I'm talking about today is managing our adrenaline, our cortisol. But there's also other things, putting dimmers in your house so that you start dimming the light, letting the melatonin work for you. There's a number of things that you can do to to help with that, but ultimately you have, to, you have to start changing the way you live because we can either live with trying to manage our time or manage our energy. And managing time has benefits, but managing our energy is about managing the stress in our life and making sure that we're, that we're not overloading our body with all these kinds of stress. You know, for a number of years, speaking actually is a little stressful just to let you know. And for me, it was, because I'm not a natural speaker. So uh, for me, my, my, my Monday was, for years, was like I had felt like I had the flu. Because it was, it was I, didn't, I wasn't managing these things I'm talking about today, about the adrenaline rush that I would get, and the cortisol. And, and so it, it really a whole day out of the week, for years and years, was like basically ruined. And so using learning to uh, manage my stress better has helped that a lot so that I'm not just wiped out on the back end of, of, of a busy week and, a diff and, and, a, and, and then the speaking. Uh, also, resting our mind is important. When's the last time you've been able to just get some rest? Not sleep, this is rest where you can dial down. This is really an, a lost art form for a lot of people. Learning to rest, totally doing a major shutdown with, of your adrenal system. And with practice, you can do this in like 10 minutes. You can, there's power naps, that can help, but a lot of people can't do naps nowadays. But, but just doing a, a massive shutdown of your, learn, just resting, not thinking of stressful thoughts, getting in a place where you can just, where you can rest, uh, if you have tight clothing, you kind of loosen that a little bit. You try not to fidget. Obviously, you turn your cell phone off, and, you, and then you, and then you uh, breathe. Breathing's a big part of that. Breathing from your stomach, not from your chest. And that's its own technique that it took me a long time to learn how to do. Breathing. Singers know how to do that because that's how you sing properly. But, but breathing, as you inhale, your stomach goes out. And then exhale, your stomach goes down. And, that's, and if, you, if you learn how to do that, you can, you can dial down. You can even do it in the moment. You're in the middle of a difficult conversation. You can, you can start to do some of these things to, to, so that you don't go into this overload of, of, of adrenaline. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for God always cares for you. If it doesn't help if we let all of those worries and stressors in our lives. We need to be able to leave them with God. God, I'm going to give these over to you. Then number four, challenge your type A tendency. So some of you are more type B, and so this point may not apply to you unless you're married to a type A, and then you'll know what they're dealing with. But, but 
you know, again, tendency is not a personality because you can actually change those things. Here's some of the things that are typical of a type, type A. They're always going. Their wheels are always churning. Their mind never stops. They think rapidly. They're always on from one thing to the next. Think on different tracks at the same time. They love to multitask. Uh, they're competitive. They have a tendency to overplan each day. They have difficulty delegating. This is a big one because delegating is a big part. Now, some, sometimes people go, oh, yeah, I don't have a problem with delegating. But you need to delegate the stress, too. If you just delegate the job, you've not really helped yourself a lot because now you're thinking about it. Now you have no control or little control and you have all the stress going on in your life. So you need to delegate the stress. And the way to do that uh, is, I don't have time to get into it today, but there's situational leadership where you, you delegate a court. You know, if, they're, if you're not sure if they can do that, that job or whatever you're delegating, you give them a small something with such low responsibility. In other words, you can, you can delegate the stress. If you can't delegate the stress, then you need to give them less. When you give them a whole bunch and you, you carry all that anxiety and stress with you, nobody wins in that. Nobody wins in that. Have to lower your tolerance for frustration. In other words, some, sometimes we just get frustrated so quickly. And, and, and people are not robots. They make mistakes. People are, all, you know, they're always messing stuff up. We're messing stuff up. It's not just everybody else. And so just creating margin and just realizing when somebody messes up or does something different than the way you wanted it, you're part of the human race. And so you just less, lower your expectations a little bit. And have a sense, of, type A, have a sense of, ju of justice. Sometimes that needs to be challenged because, again, people are not robots. They don't always hit all the rules. And you can end up driving yourself crazy, driving yourself absolutely crazy. Now, the process that all of us, type A, type B, re regardless of where you're at, is, is more than the end goal is the process. God uses challenges in our lives to grow us. And here's what he says about that. Look at this. You are living a brand new kind of life that is continually learning more and more of what is right and trying constantly to be more and more Christ-like who created this new life within you. So God is in the process of creating us in his image, like Christ, with godly character, the fruit of the Spirit, and the challenges in life are part of the process, part of the way that he does that, so that we become more like Christ. And then number five is to learn to experience God's peace. Learn to experience God's peace. Now, the Bible talks a lot about peace. Jesus talks a lot about the peace of God that you can get that's, that's um, uniquely from God the Father. And then Paul picks it up a lot, like he does here in Philippians, when he says, in the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, God does promise peace, and yet it feels so elusive. Now, let me, let me reason with you. God designed our bodies to work a particular way. If we go against the grain of how our bodies are wired, and then, but we're praying for like magic pixie dust to make us, you know, even though we're going to completely violate God's, the way he designed us. And, but yet I need you to kind of ignore that behavior, God, and I still need your peace. It just doesn't work like that. They're connected. Your body is intricately connected to your spirit, your soul, and how God wants to bless you. So for many people, you know, they have a hard time uh, having, having, enjoyment in God's presence, enjoying God. Some of you are that way. You know, I don't, I can't, I have a hard time enjoying God's presence, finding pleasure in God. And that's connected to peace, by the way. But be enjoying God. And one of the reasons is because we live in a society where there's an industry with trying to stimulate 
and excite you and entertain you so that we're constantly having this, there's, a, there's something in, the, in, in, our, in our bodies called the dopamine pathway that makes you feel pleasure. It's actually a form. And, and you know what? Pleasure is part of God's purpose for you. It, it really is. He wants you to enjoy relationships. He wants you to enjoy food. He wants you to enjoy sex. There's a lot of great pleasurable things. But he also wants you to enjoy him. But if we are overridden with so much pleasure, all of a sudden we can't find pleasure in God anymore. There's, I've talked to pastors that are like that. that pastors that often will find, try to find pleasure outside of God's purpose for them. You know, they'll have a moral failure. And they'll say, I, just could, I didn't have any enjoyment in God's presence and I was hoping this would satisfy, which of course it doesn't. But we need to be in alignment and, and recognize that if we sabotage what God's trying to do in our lives with adrenaline, cortisol, all kinds of, where we're overcharging our body with all these hormones, but then wanting supernatural peace to come and kind of ignore how that works, it just doesn't work like that. So part of the, reason, part of the way that we achieve God's peace is allowing our bodies to get how God designed them. And that's why this is important, where we, okay, I'm not going to just go through life charged up on all the adrenaline, all the cortisone. I, I need to dial things back. I love this poem, and then we'll close in prayer. Slow me down, Lord. Ease the pounding of my heart by quieting of my mind. The quieting of my mind. Steady my hurried pace with a vision of the eternal reach of time. Give me, amidst the confusion of my days, the calmness of the everlasting hills. Break the tension of my nerves with the soothing music of the singing streams that live in my memory. Help me to know the restoring power of sleep. Teach me the art of taking minute vacations, of slowing down. Dialing down. Letting God Speak to us, give us his peace, and letting our bodies be in alignment with how he created us. Let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Well, Lord, I know that there's some pretty significant negative impacts to a hurried lifestyle. We feel more stress. We lose our joy. We're less productive. And worst of all, we can't hear you. Would you pray to God and say, God, help me with my hurry sickness. It's, it's not healthy. It's a sickness. Just kind of identify that. Say, God, I give you permission to point anything out you see that makes you sad. I don't want to be tired all the time anymore, overloaded, frustrated easily with people because I have no margin for myself, for you, for others. Some of you, you're stretched beyond capacity. Our culture will say, no, no, you got it. More, better, faster, keep going that way. God wants to speak in and say, no, don't do that. Make a counterculture decision. Say, I want balance in my life. I want to allow my body to be blessable, to experience the peace of God. If you've never asked Christ into your life, you feel far from God right now, I want to invite you to pray with me right where you're at, with every eye closed, every head bowed. If that's you, you're saying, you know, I don't feel very close to God. I need to invite God. I need to get back on track. Or maybe you've just never asked Christ into your life. Why not do that right now with me? I'd like to lead you in a prayer. You can just pray this. If, you, if, you, if you're ready to pray that prayer and say, yeah, I want to get close to God, I, I want to be, I, I want God in my life and in charge. Then just, I, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer, but just let me know by just slipping your hand up just so that I can see it right where you're at. Okay, bless you.
Who else? You say, yep, I see it. Anybody else saying, that's me? Yep, I see you over there in the back. Okay, you can put your hand down. Pray this prayer. Say, today, God, I need your peace in my life. I invite you into my heart. Bring your healing touch. Forgive me, God. When I violate the way you've designed my body, give me the power to make quality choices from this point forward. Would you say, God, give me a supportive group around me that can champion me and pray for me? Maybe a small group. Today, Lord, today, do your work in my life. Would you say, God, give me a fresh start. Restore joy in my heart. Help me to laugh more, smile more, be more engaging, more present with people around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.